I'm Ted Venema. The purpose of this video is to highlight more of the technology inside the hearing aids. Let's take a walk down that road here. Hearing aid technology. Remember what we said earlier, this audiogram it has lots of lines on it. Let me describe this to you in general. Here's a person who might have a 50 decibel hearing loss in his left ear or her left ear, okay? So the person can't hear until 50 decibels across the frequencies. So ima <clears throat> imagine the top line here being 5 decibels, very soft. How much would we want to amplify that so that the person with the 50 decibel hearing loss could hear it? Well we'd want to amplify it by the full degree of the loss. So now 5 turns into 55, and the person can hear it. What if the incoming sound, however, to the microphone is 60 decibels? How much would we want to amplify a sound of 60 decibels coming into the hearing aid for this person? Would we want to amplify it by the full degree of the loss and bring it down here? No, it would be too loud. How come? Because the person's floor of hearing sensitivity is increased, but his ceiling of loudness tolerance hasn't. In short, what we call his dynamic range is smaller. He can't hear soft sounds down here. He has to have them here to hear them. And yet 100 decibels, for example, is still too loud. So hearing aids have to use a weird technology, or it's not weird, it's interesting, called compression. And that means they've got to amplify soft sounds by a lot, average sounds by less, and now look at the 90. Let's say if the sound coming in was 90 decibels, how much would you want to amplify that? Answer is not by much. So you can see that the degree of amplification is going down, 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 as the input sound to the hearing aid is going up, up, up. That's called compression. Here's another way of showing the same thing. 10 decibels, 100 decibels. And this is perception of loudness. Follow the red line, normal hearing. For a normal hearing person, 10 or 20 sounds soft. For a normal hearing person, 50 to 60 sounds comfortable. For a normal hearing person, 90 to 100 sounds too loud. Now introduce mild to moderate sensory neural loss. We're looking at the light blue line. Now 50 to, 60, 50 to 60 sounds soft, and yet 90 to 100 sounds too loud. See how the lines converge at the top? This means hearing aids have to amplify soft sounds by a lot, average by less, and loud by little or nothing at all. There's a word for that, and it's called compression and it indicates an amplifier that's changing the amount by which it's amplifying depending on the loudness of the sound coming into the microphone. The next problem that people have with hearing aids, let's leave that one behind, let's look at another facet that hearing aids need to deal with and that's speech in noise plus hearing aids is problems in noise. How come? You think about that. Due to hair cell damage, hearing aids have to do two things. First, they have to provide gain, or what we call amplification, for the hearing loss. And as we said earlier, that's done by means of compression, amplifying soft sounds by a lot and loud sounds by little or nothing at all. But secondly, hearing aids need to increase what we call the signal to noise ratio. What the heck is that? Well, that's the intensity or the loudness of speech compared to the loudness of the noise. Let's say the speech is 60 decibels and the noise is 60 decibels. Well, that's even Steven, so that's a zero decibel signal to noise ratio. Let's say the speech is 60 and the noise is 70. That's a minus 10 decibel signal to noise ratio. Let's say the speech is 60 and the noise is 50. Well, that's a plus 10 signal to noise ratio. Obviously, the better the signal to noise ratio, the easier it is for the person to listen to speech and noise. So hearing aids have to deal with that because the biggest complaint of hearing aid wearers is background noise. And it's not their fault. It's because of hair cell 
damage. You not only need to provide amplification for the loss, but we need to also look at increasing the signal to noise ratio. Digital hearing aids today, let's look at how they can do this. First of all, look at the top. It's a complicated diagram, but then again not. Look at the top one first. Analog. Analog pre-digital. Here's the micro sound coming into the microphone, changed into electricity. The electricity is amplified. The amplified electricity is changed back into sound by the speaker. So the little sound became a bigger one. Now look at digital. Same kind of microphone, sound comes in, it's changed into electricity, but now the electricity is changed into digits, analog to digital converter. And now it's all math. And with math, you can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. You can manipulate equations till the cows come home. You can do lots of things with math. So now, this is the digital signal processor manipulating all the numerical digits. Sometimes they call that algorithms. Enough on that. The digital, once that's done, the digital information is changed back into analog, D to A converter, and that's sent to the speaker and now the sound again is made louder. So digital just allows a lot more exquisite manipulations. That slide we've seen, look at what's happening in digital hearing aids. They have lots of channels, okay? It almost looks like an equalizer on some of these things that people play in their cars or at the back of a, of a bar when music's playing, the music person is adjusting all these buttons. Hearing aids can control the amplification exquisitely at different frequencies. So you can think of it instead of just amplifying sounds, you've got all my little fingers and each finger is a particular little band and I can raise or lower these depending on the shape of the person's hearing loss. So no two hearing losses are identical. Hearing aids take a prescription just like glasses. I can't wear yours, you can't wear mine. It's the same with hearing aids and that's what a lot of people don't realize about hearing aids but we program them really finely so that we can adjust the frequency response, the shape of the gain, the shape of the amplification. We can exquisitely sculpt that because we can divide things up so neatly into different channels. That's, that's one big advantage. So here you've got a sloping hearing loss, typical presbycusis, and I can arrange the channels to give more and more amplification in the treble because this guy needs treble amplification. But I could raise or lower these to all depending on where these hearing levels were. Another thing is hearing aids have different programs. So I can store one frequency response of a hearing aid. So look at this white line. Let's call that what I did here just for the heck of it, okay? I can store that as the main program for the pr listening to speech in quiet. But if a person's listening to speech in noise, what's the most important parts of speech from past videos? High frequency consonants. So if the person's listening in noise, I want to increase the amplification for the high frequencies. And what's background noise? Mostly low frequency. Think of the hubbub and babble of background speech and noise. It's mostly blah, 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 low frequency. So I want to decrease the lows and increase the highs. So the dashed line might be really good for listening to speech in noise. But maybe the person likes music. And when you think of music, you've got all the different frequencies. You want a lot of bass because Music has lots of low frequency sounds in it. So you might want a music program that provided a lot more bass amplification for listening to music. And the person can manipulate these programs often by means of a little remote device held in his or her hand or can push a button on the hearing aid to toggle among the various programs. Once again, these are set up by the clinician along with the client so that we can tailor make the hearing aid suit the person's individual requirements. Another thing in digital technology is automatic feedback reduction. What's that? The whistling in hearing aids. 
We, that's another main complaint. Why is that? Why do hearing aids whistle? Why do, here's why they did. It's like me talking in a mic and going too close to a speaker. And now, not only is the sound of my voice coming into my mic, but now the sound from the speaker's going into the mic. And you're getting a vicious circle there, and you get that shrieking whistle. Hearing aids will do that too. If sound is coming out of the, out of the hearing aid and leaking back out and getting picked up by the mic, amplified, hitting the eardrum, leaking back up, picking by, picked up by the mic again, you're getting feedback. Same thing. That was a main source of complaint in hearing aid wearers. So digital hearing aids can sense, oh, there might be feedback at that frequency. And if there's feedback happening as a result of too much amplification at that frequency, the hearing aid can detect that and it can actually cut it off. It actually produces an opposite sound, completely out of phase, and it knocks out the feedback, called automatic feedback reduction. You can only do that with digital technology. Here's another thing in digital technology, digital noise reduction. Now when you look at the top one, that might be the, way, the sound wave of a fan or an air conditioner. See how it stays steady in intensity over time? Intensity is the height, time is the, hor is the vertical. And you can see that the loudness stayed the same. So when you think of traffic, background, cocktail speech babble, blah, 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 a fan, air conditioner, they're, they're staying relatively steady in intensity over time. But now think of the sound of my speech talking to you right now. That would be more like the bottom sound wave. See how it's changing rapidly in intensity over time? That's called, it's modulating. Its intensity is blah, 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 blah. So hearing aids today detect, does the sound coming into my microphone, does it look more like this or does it look more like this? If it looks more like this, reduce the amplification. If it looks more like this, increase the amplification. Digital noise reduction. Quite interesting. So what we can do, because we've got all these channels in a digital hearing aid, and along with the use of digital noise reduction, we can reduce the amplification wherever it needs to be reduced. So if noise is sensed in the low frequency channels, the gain is reduced there. If noise is sensed here, the gain is reduced there. If noise is sensed here, the gain is reduced there. So it's really a matter of whoppingly complex digital algorithms that we are using today to handle speech in noise. Another way we do it is with directional microphones so that hearing aids pick up sound in the direction you are facing. And we do that by having two little mics side by side. Now I'm going to hold up a hearing aid and I'll try and point this out to you here. This is an in-the-ear hearing aid, okay? You can see that little wire, to the little fishing line there that I talked about in other videos. And when I show you this hearing aid, you'll see two little dots. One here and one here. And so you're looking at these two little dots, okay? And that's going to be two separate little microphones. Difficult to see, but if you look at a hearing aid close up, when you see two little dots on it, that's a directional microphone. It means it's got one entry here and another entry there. What, why and wherefore? What does that do? If sound wiggles a diaphragm in a microphone, it changes sound into electricity. But if sound hits that diaphragm from opposite directions at the same time, cancellation. Okay, or the sound of one hand clapping. <laughs> if you take a look at a directional mic, it'll have two doorways, one here, one here, but they slow the sound down in one of the doorways. If sound comes from the front, it comes in, wiggles the diaphragm, normal, okay? But if sound comes from the rear, it gets slowed down. Meanwhile, sound comes around and enters through the front door, and by the time sound has come through the rear door, there is cancellation.
And that's how directional microphones reduce the amplification of sounds coming from the sides and the rear. And they focus more on sounds coming from the front. This is kind of a picture of the sensitivity pattern of a directional mic. Normal microphones would be the blue circle. They're equally sensitive to sounds coming from all directions. Directional mics might be called cardioid, like this red heart. Sensitive to sounds from the front, but not from the rear. Or they might have other directional patterns, but the point is all directional microphones are less sensitive. The, the green, the black, the red are three different directional microphones. And notice all of them are less sensitive to sounds from the sides and the rear than the regular omnidirectional microphone is. So basically, when you put it all together, directional microphones and digital noise reduction algorithms. Digital noise reduction really makes a listener more subjectively comfortable when listening in noise. Directional microphones objectively increase the percent of words understood in noise. The way I look at it is, one is the science, one's the art. One's the head, one's the heart. Together they make a really good team. It's been my pleasure to talk to you about digital hearing aid technology. Stay tuned for more to come. Cheers.